Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's talk about a little known application in Mac OS X called the Archive Utility. In OS X Leopard, you may notice that if you get a .zip file, you can extract it without using another program. Just double click on it and it will expand. Likewise, if you control click on a folder or file, you can see that there's an option to compress that file and it will create a zip file from it compressed and ready to send to somebody else or archive. Well, this is all done through a little application called the Archive Utility, but you won't find it in the Applications folder or the Utilities folder. So where do you find it? Well, go up to your hard drive level and then click on System, and then Library, and then Core Services. And under there you'll find the Archive Utility. Now, when you go ahead and double click to run it, you won't see anything right away because it doesn't open up a window. But you do get the Archive Utility menu up here. In File you get the ability to create an archive and expand an archive. So you can do these manually through the application rather than through double clicking or control clicking on a file or set of folders. In the Preferences for Archive Utility you'll find a bunch of interesting things. For instance, you can change where you expand files. By default it's in the same directory as the archive but you can also select a specific folder. Then you can select what to do after expanding. For instance, leaving the archive alone is default, but you can automatically have it moved, moved to the trash or delete it or move it to a specific location. Likewise, when you create an archive, the same thing. You can set where to save it and what to do after archiving, like automatically move them or delete the originals. There's also something for Use Archive Format. Now, this allows you to change what is saved, but it will not change it for the Finder version of Archive Utility. Instead, it will only change it when you actually use this archive utility and use either the Create Archive or Expand Archive. So you've got a lot of options here uh, using this Preference pane. Now what's really cool is if you don't want to have to go and find Archive Utility to change these preferences all the time, here's how you can actually add it to your system preferences. Click on Archive Utility and Control click. Click Show Package Contents. You'll get another uh, window and inside of it you'll get Contents, and then Resources. Inside that you'll have Archives.PrefPane. If you double click on that it will actually ask you if you want to add this to your System Preferences. And then to access all these prefs all you need to do is go to System Preferences and there will be one called Archives that you can now access all those things we just looked at. So what are these options here? The Archive Format for Compressed Archive, Regular Archive, and Zip Archive. Now Zip Archive is actually the default when you use it in the Finder. But the default for using the application here is Compressed Archive. Compressed Archive will create a file called CPGZ, which is a compressed GZIP archive. A little bit different than a ZIP archive, but you get a similar amount of compression. A regular archive doesn't compress it at all. Just create something called a CPIO, which is also kind of like a tar file if you're familiar with Unix. It's basically just a single file that contains a whole bunch of files, but it's not compressed. Or you can select to save as a regular ZIP archive. Now you want to leave the Archive Utility where it is, but you may want to go ahead and create an alias to it in your Utilities folder so you can access it more easily or if you think you use it a lot, maybe even drag it to your dock to add it to your dock so you can easily access it there. Now there's probably a good reason why this application is hidden in such a way. It's probably not quite ready for prime time. Perhaps in Snow Leopard we'll see a version of this that exists in the Applications Utilities folder where maybe there's some more options and everything works a little nicer. But until then, here's a handy way to access some cool features for compression or decompression on your Mac. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.